Hi everyone, today we are with GM Evgeny Romanov. First of all, thank you for coming and thank you for supporting our project. We are really appreciate for that. Merhaba, Satranç Sevaler. <laughs> thank you, Melih. Very nice being here. Can you introduce yourself to our subscribers? I'm a chess player. <laughs> chess player, yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's not easy to in introduce yourself usually, but uh, I describe myself kind of the combined profession occupi uh, occupation. I'm chess player and I'm professional chess coach at the same time. As the chess player, mostly I'm known by uh, winning uh, Russian European World Youth Championships, also getting bronze individual men European Championship winning more than 40 open tournaments with Grandmaster participation. So, and something else, let's say like this. And as the coach, mostly I known as the national, different national teams coach with the Georgian female team. I won uh, Olympic bronze medal in 2018 in Batumi and uh, European uh, team championship silver medal in 2019, Georgia. Also my student, known Grandmaster from uh, Norway, Ari Antari became world champion under 20 few years ago. At the moment I created about, or created is uh, too much to say, helped to become uh, good grandmasters. Nine of my students mm -hmm. from like a very, very beginning. And uh, I'm happy with that and happy with chess development. Mm -hmm. what, what a career. Even in my dream, I can't reach probably. <laughs> really successful. You were also Turkish national chess coach, yeah? Yeah, I worked with Turkish national team for one year mm -hmm. uh, back in uh, 2020 before pandemic started. Mm -hmm. We started 2019 and continued 2020. Yeah, uh, now unfortunately we didn't find the understanding with uh, mm -hmm. Turkish Chess Federation and I'm not coaching the national men team, but I still live in Turkey and uh, <laughs> I have good contact to your country. <laughs> okay, but you forget the most important thing. You are my teammate. <laughs> uh, regards to Aqua Match. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, it was really good memories. Two years ago or something like that? It's two years ago. Yeah, time time flies. We played in Konya. Yeah, and we got medal for yeah. Turkish team championship. Yeah, we were actually we were not strong, but we fight. <laughs> it was uh, superior uh, team spirit. Yeah, and. I think it's thanks to you because you were like our father, <laughs> our <laughs> brother, and it was really good. Uh, I'm uh, always very kind to share my experience and uh, really nice to see that the uh, influence of my side brought a lot to you. So mm -hmm. thanks for your words. Okay, thank you. And if you are ready, we can start. Suddenly, this game happened a few weeks ago in uh, Norwegian Open, Pragero. I played uh, Grandmaster, my very good friend, Gudmundur Hjartarsson from Iceland. Nothing actually predicted such a continuation of the game. In this game, I tried to surprise the opponent to get reads uh, from uh, his preparations. He's very, very tough worker. And uh, I also tried kind of to complicate since it was double round per day and I didn't want to take a long game and to go for the end game versus uh, Gumi. So uh, the opening choice was uh, pretty weird and I couldn't imagine, of course, that uh, it will end in uh, such a successful way. I'm white and I play bishop g5. Kind of uh, <laughs> weird line. Uh, as people say, uh, most important not to blunder this bishop. I immediately show you the trick. Trick is like this. C6, uh, E3, H6, bishop H4, queen B6, attacking the pawn, queen C1, and black is playing E5. And how it happened tons of the times in the blitz, D takes E5, Queen before check and the bishop is gone on the fourth rank. So uh, this is what I had to remember for the morning game, <laughs> that I came there not to blunder my bishop. But honestly, the move is not so bad, of course. Uh, I try to prevent normal development of black with knight f6. Mm -hmm. Black has to develop somehow. Mm -hmm. And he had chosen the way of development by punching my bishop out first by playing f6. Yeah, he controls the file. Of course, if I play bishop h4, then bishop little bit outplayed on the h4 square uh, because like the pawns are very, very strong. And mm -hmm. there is uh, after bishop h4 mm, in many lines, nice development by knight h6 to come to f5. I knew about f6 move. Uh, in my notes, it's been written that maybe bishop d2 is not so bad. 
But for this game, as I mentioned from the beginning, I uh, really wanted to have something interesting. So bishop f4, another obvious opportunity. And after c5, I play kind of uh, reversed Albin Gambit mm -hmm. by e4. So uh, I just show what is the uh, Albin Gambit. Is d5, c4, and e5. Mm -hmm. This is what black is playing. D takes e5 and then d4. So now you see that I tried to get the same mm -hmm. in my position, in my game, with a D takes e4, potentially d5, and looks pretty similar, just my bishop is developed. I have to admit that maybe in this move order d5 would not happen, but how I would react you will realize and recognize in the main line. So with uh, e4 black has to be very accurate already. I don't say that it's better for white or good for white, but you see that the king's safety is pretty bad. Yeah. You must always keep in mind this check controlling the fifth rank. And uh, pawns are very unstable, plus I have good development. My bishop is on a four. Well, it's pretty good. Hence, uh, black needs to develop the pieces and maybe it makes more sense uh, to play knight c6 by one very interesting try. Of course, if queen h5 now, then uh, it goes for g6, queen d5, and it ends up with a knight in the center. Or something like this. It's not very important mm -hmm. uh, exactly here. So we come back for this e4, but you see white starting approaching very aggressive. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And you generally you have to develop the pieces. When aggression comes, when the center is under the fire, you need to develop the pieces kind of to cooperate your position. So, and here Gumi was a bit inaccurate. He did not feel the danger, how dangerous it is. And he made the logical move. C takes d4. Basically, I believe many, many of uh, uh, our followers would make it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, pawn is in the center. Why not to take the pawn? You take on d5, then we take back. You give the check, then we at least change the queens. Mm -hmm. So it looks very logical. Can't take queen d4 because e5, yeah? So threatening to use this pawn on f6 because with pawn on f6 it's guarding on e5. But somehow he overlooked my idea. And my idea was to take on b8. This knight is very dangerous. Mm -hmm. He controls the center fully. And I need to get my queen into the center. There are three moves in the position, what I see. I see rook takes b8, of course. I see important check on a5 and I see the capture back on e4 if black wants to sacrifice the piece. So we start with this, but I suppose it comes to very calm play. I'm piece up and uh, after e5 I just continue with knight d2. I think we cannot play Bishop takes e5 because of queen a5 check. Yeah? yeah, this is the point. If I take on e5 at once, then it would happen queen a5 check and queen takes e5. But if knight d2, I am attacking the pawn, it's not easy to guard it. I think basically almost impossible. Mm -hmm. And I can still, I, I can uh, keep very fast development. Yeah. And then queen e2. Mm -hmm. So I was not scared of this. I was a little bit worried about this check, queen a5 check. Because in the line with knight d2, rook b8, I would say my knight is not perfectly placed here. Mm -hmm. It looks not, not, not great at all. And uh, I'm not threatening to do something in the center. But I was happy when I found other idea. I found the idea of b4 to get queen first to this square, and then to guard knight d2. Rook takes b8, then to then to choose basically because I think both options with queen h5 and queen takes d5, like delivering queen through the check to the center, is very nice. But I think this one is also pretty strong because uh, I have a chance to play bishop b5 at once, like with very very fast development mm -hmm. and uh, centralizing my pieces. So I suppose. Queen e5 is also very dangerous for black, and we are in the last in the last moment. Yeah, rook takes b8. What else? But then it comes 
queen takes d4. And now it's double threat. I'm threatening to take the pawn on a7, and I'm threatening to take the pawn on d5. If he takes on e4, then after queen takes a7, it's basically potentially pawn up. I want to play bishop b5, I want to play knight c3. This double pawn will fall while all the black pieces are yeah. not developed. I think it's almost lost for black. Therefore, his point is to give me a check now. Mm -hmm. After uh, queen takes d4, uh, he decided to play queen a5. There is some sense behind. So I obviously develop with knight c3, and then he takes the pawn. And now he wants, yes, I will have some checks. He wants to, to hide on f7, then to play e6, knight e7. Obviously, I think that even in this move order, a white is better. White is almost winning everywhere. Mm -hmm. But somehow it happened, not often, but it happened that uh, such a development advantage leads to immediate win. Very unfortunate for my friends, I found bishop b5 check, king f7, one more check, and here he had to resign, because in case of e6 or bishop e6, it would happen, discovered check bishop e8, and black is losing the queen on a5. So I have to admit that, of course, I'm happy. This is the shortest game in uh, my professional career and uh, maybe the fastest ever game, fastest ever victory against the Grandmaster in the world. Like uh, fully that information has to be checked with the database. Uh, but uh, to beat Grandmaster in nine moves is a very, very um, special achievement, of course, and special feeling. But at the same time, of course, you feel sorry for, yeah, for, yeah, for, for the opponent mm -hmm. because he did not deserve like this. It just was a wrong moment and one wrong solution. And you can see how one wrong solution here with c takes d4 might lead to already huge troubles after bishop b8. Mm -hmm. So by taking the concrete solutions, you clearly have to go like deeply and to understand what would gonna be but of course nine moves and very short game <laughs> yeah good achievement <laughs> yeah sorry for him but uh, okay yeah what can we do as current world champion says magnus carlson chess is merciless mm, yeah. you have to be merciless to your opponent yeah uh, actually any sport merciless yeah okay uh, i didn't want to interrupt you but i want to show a line after bishop b8, I was thinking e5, but now it doesn't work because we can take bishop takes e5 because now there is no check. I mean, there is check, but yeah, yeah but no, no threat to the bishop. Yeah, yeah. And then it's and after f takes e5, queen h5, and now we will take the e5 pawn and probably it's also winning but if there is no bishop takes e5 maybe e5 is good move because now i want to improve my pieces and you cut my bishop yeah. yes of course but if <laughs> yeah <laughs> doesn't work <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. in this moment yeah okay thank you for <laughs> this shortest game against gm probably this is worth record yeah yeah perhaps so sorry for him but anyway yeah but it's very good uh, for uh, our spectators mm -hmm. to see that uh, it's possible to create even nowadays with full of theory mm -hmm. possible to create uh, something new in chess yeah even from the first moves and mm -hmm. to have the crucial decisions okay so again thank you for coming i hope we, we will see you again here because you live in Turkey. <laughs> yeah. Okay, thank you for watching and see you in next videos.